Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Well, I know it will be. I'm, I'm going to be there. I, I'm looking forward to it. So. That. I can't wait to see you. Me too, man. Me too. I'm so excited. Stop, 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 stop. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Hello, this is Alfie Templeman and welcome to Enemies, Friends Like These. Hi, this is Chloe Moriando and welcome to Enemies, Friends Like These. Well, we started making music for fun, right? It was like, do you remember when we made that song in like literally an hour on Logic? Oh like, yeah, true. That well, was that was a long time ago. That feels like well, centuries ago. It's crazy. Yeah. It was like the start of the pandemic and yeah. that itself just feels like a different world, man. I guess that's why it feels like it was like a different universe at that yeah. time. But yeah. I was like always a fan of Elfie's stuff. I remember the first song I ever heard was um, Happiness in Liquid Form and I was like fucking bopping to that like pre-pandemic. <laughs> and then it was like, whoa, now we know each other and now we like are friends and have made songs and yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. and I always listen to your stuff and then I I think I became friends with um one of the people from your label Katerina and and she like got us kind of like together basically which was awesome I, and I guess that's where things kind of just progressed and we became mates and that was the same time that I we I kind of met Thomas through like Twitter as well who's on, on exactly the, so it's yeah on, it was, on the track kind of time yeah no, Thomas is a little prince. I'm oh. so excited to I'm so excited to meet both of you guys in person, actually. Oh like, man, it's gonna be amazing. I'm I'm really excited. Yeah. Thomas. Let's talk about that. I can't wait. It's gonna be <laughs> so fucking cool. It's gonna be sick. Well, it started off as an O Wonder song that we all just kind of really liked. Kind of just like felt like it was a, a good vibe and stuff. And I think we all had little bits and pieces that we kind of wanted to add to it um in our own way if that makes sense. And I think like collectively speaking, we wanted to bring an element of youth and just like growing up to the song that wasn't wasn't quite there necessarily. Cause I guess I wonder a little bit older. Um, it was just like changing the lyrics slightly and just like things like that. But I kind of wanted to wanted it to be um, like one of those songs that you just relate to and it reminds you of a certain time in your life and it feels just kind of nostalgic. So that's kind of where I was coming at, but that was my inspiration. Yeah, it's about, it's about weed. That's yeah. what I've done. <laughs> Damn. Okay, we went there. <laughs> it, it is. What? It says it in there, bro. <laughs> there you go. I like it. It's a good <laughs> song. It's so fun. I was so happy to like be able to be on a track with these two people who are really sick and make really cool music that I admire a lot. And I hope that we get to do more stuff because oh, that bro. was fun. And oh, I think we could do a lot more cool stuff like just like starting from scratch you know? oh yeah yeah i'd love to do something some more stuff from scratch as well because mm -hmm. I, I mean maybe that, in person so we don't have to like be through a screen all the time bro, i'm fed up of, of like constant zoom sessions i can't lie it's like it's, it's hurting it's impossible like, to actually feel the vibe at this mm -hmm. point but you've got to just you've got to do stuff in person i think luckily now things are getting a little bit better i guess we can mm -hmm. hopefully meet up soon which would be just awesome just to vibe in the same room and just feel the Hell same. Yeah. And it's just fun. I find like writing with people in the same room is just so much fun. Like walking around, getting all hype and listening to the song and like just just enjoying yourself. It's a really cool experience. I'm excited to experience that more frequently nowadays, hopefully if, if things go well. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Well, it was just fun. I mean, I just remember doing that crazy Zoom call where we were thinking of the most absurd lyrics. Um, yeah, that was good. I remember Thomas like having like his air his uh, AirPods in, like being all the way like on a bunk bed, <laughs> like on the other side of the room, being like, "What if like we did well, maybe?" Like he's like upside down and shit. We're like, okay. And we had like a shared note, and like yeah. we were like talking to each other in the shared note. There's like a picture of like a vase with flowers in it, and then like a little puppy laying in grass, but, like, oh, like a little stock I photo. Spamming the the notes thing with random. It was shit. great. Yeah. I, it, every time I look back and like Zach, my manager recently asked me to send him like my version of the lyrics for that, <laughs> and like I had to like sift through like all the little pictures of dogs and like, hi, hey Chloe. What's up? Yeah, exactly. That, that, that lamp. 
lamp. It was a vase. Dog. There's yeah. It wasn't a. It was a vase. It wasn't a vase. It was a lamp. I mean. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's some really good stuff on there. I'm I'm a big fan of of the um. I'm proud. Probably the best way to write lyrics, you know. I guess it that's was good. What actually inspired it? Just dogs and bananas and yeah. vases and lamps. That's see, I I threw it in your head now. I like I don't know why. Maybe it belongs there. I don't there know. Yeah, you might as well rewrite the song actually, and and just <laughs> we'll write a new song and include that in the next note. Yeah. It's got to be done. What was the reaction to Blood Bunny like, man? That was like, I'm gonna give that one like a six out of 10, like the extra oh, point for effort. It would have been a five, but extra point for effort because that was like, okay. But- With your Fantano. Six out of 10 from Fantano is pretty good. So I'll take that. <laughs> but in terms of Blood Bunny, I was referring to Alpha's accent in case anyone was wondering. That was fake. Oh, it's a 10 out of 10. But Blood Bunny, um, that was a crazy thing for me. It feels like, it's been like a really long time, but also a really short time since it's been out. It's mm. like, <clears throat> it still feels like my baby. I am so excited to tour it. The reaction to it made me feel like uh, things were actually real. Like it's mm, like the, the whole my music career thing didn't just like end after the ukulele part of my life, if sure. that makes sense. Like this was my first like real album that I like put together with other people intending to make it like a full mm. album, not just um, making an album and accidentally calling it an EP because I was like 13. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is what I was like. So this is just all very crazy to me in a great way. I'm just like so excited to see people's reactions in person. That's my favorite part about making music I've found so far is like being able to see people's faces and like seeing them sing your lyrics back at you is like I'm so grateful for people who are fans of live music fans of my music and mm. fans of my album all of them in general I'm just excited it was nice <laughs> of all the projects that you put out like putting out a full length album was like the most exciting kind of like release just putting something out that big and that like oh fuck yeah stuff. I was like I didn't know what to expect whatsoever I was scared that like no one would care like yeah. it wouldn't get that much reaction mm. um but I was like just very proud of having made something that big and that yeah something that I was that proud of, I guess, like to listen to and to, I don't know, to show people and not be embarrassed to play for people. I have, I have a problem with that. Like I get, I get really embarrassed to play songs for people and stuff, which I think is a thing for a lot of artists and people in general with their art and their work. But mm. um, I don't know, I'm proud of that album a lot. And I'm, I, it made me like a lot more confident and excited to make more stuff and collaborate with more people and be less afraid to collaborate with more people because yep. so far it's been fucking awesome. That's brilliant. You should be proud of it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so Alfie, uh, can you tell me how the response was um, for Forever It Isn't Long Enough? How do you feel about that? Mm, that was a 10 out of 10, Chloe. Um, like nice and nice and spaced out, you know, you, uh, just the amount of ums in there. Very British. Um, Thank you. Well Thank you. Yeah, naturally saying the ums as well. And, uh, um, Forever Isn't uh, Long Enough is also a 10 out of 10, just so oh, you know. Bro. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I think we had a lot of things in common. Obviously, Forever Isn't Long Enough for me, it wasn't as big. Like it wasn't uh, like a full length album. It wasn't as complete as your record but um i just i wanted to do something that was slightly bigger than what i'd done before because uh, obviously i i record recorded most of it when i was 16 so it's been a long time coming and the pandemic kind of holding things up so I, I i think i got to a point when i was recording it where i was quite nervous and i was quite like you know when i'd show my parents and my friends the tracks like i put them on and then leave the room and run out and like hope that they liked it because I had all these songs and I didn't really know what to do with them now that the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. Like I, I was a bit more self-conscious. 
because when I was playing like live gigs in like 2019 and the start of 2020, I was slightly building up my confidence. And then all of a sudden it just came crashing down again. Once I was like back in my room and I had nobody to really like, just like reassure me that what I was doing was like good. And like, I couldn't play any of the new songs. So I didn't know what anyone thought of them. So it was really scary to go back to kind of like that position and have to start afresh. But uh, to see that people liked it, it was, um, you know, to see that they could see that I was trying to step up my production game and stuff and 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 just make the best music I could. It was it, it just helped and it's helped me make more stuff recently. I'm kind of making my debut album at the moment. So it's kind of helped me just realize that, you know, people have allowed me to kind of make a change and do something a bit different and um, go for it. So I know that now when, I, when it comes to making the debut album, like the full length, like people will be fine with it. People will understand that, you know, I've changed my sound once again and that's just Alfie, big old Alfie too. So yeah, <laughs> 100%, I'm, I'm really, really excited. It's just the Alf, that's all. It's just Alf. Oh, yeah, man. No, you're so cool. Like your new stuff is amazing. Like the title track, Wait I Lied and Film Scene Daydream are all like such good songs. Those are my favorites. Um, I'm just like so it's, are you going to be like doing like live stuff like obviously I know you're going to be um supporting me for some of my shows on tour yeah that's what I'm looking forward to like so much actually just coming coming over and playing shows with you and stuff so and so is Thomas that's going to be awesome as well like it's just well, like, uh, yeah fine. are we going to like be able to all hang out like can we somehow arrange that like, I'm, I'm gonna be in America hopefully before the tour anyways so we should hang man. that's gonna be so fun I can't oh, wait be wicked yeah I'm, it's gonna I'm, be so good um have you got any live gigs lined up apart from the tour uh, that I'm doing with you <laughs> I mean honestly at the moment there's there's a support tour that's not announced yet that I'm really 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 stoked for that I'm not allowed to talk about yet I want to spoil it but I won't I'm so excited um and that's going to be in between the two legs of tour that I have uh coming up which are going to be like all in total including the support tour um going to be like two months which is going to be crazy it's going to be the longest tour I've ever done like by myself like with my band with like more than just a ukulele and a quarter inch as my load in <laughs> like it's how are you prepping for that though dude like it's gonna be a lot I've been rehearsing with my band who's like they're the greatest people in the world my drummer like is a superhuman when it comes to knowledge about these things and does a lot of really cool stuff with gear and like my like the other two like bassist and guitarists and I, I don't even know what to call them because they do so much like they they do yeah. so much for me like instrumentalist wise and like just as friends like we've been really close um for the past like I don't even know how long it's been like over a year now I think that's yeah. crazy but um I'm just we've been rehearsing and getting ready and I'm I'm like so excited to have a headlining tour Oh yeah, that's, that's awesome. gonna be that long and like big. It's crazy to me, and and then we're gonna support in the middle, and it'll be really really fun. Then, um, and I don't know, it's it's gonna be cool. We leave for tour like I think the the show, the first show of tour is the day after my birthday. Um, oh, that'll be sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, like having a great band with you, not just musical wise, but friendship wise as well, just makes things so much better. And okay. so much easier, There's so much like less stress involved. And they're literally amazing. I forgot to even like say their names. Caitlin is my drummer. She's fucking fantastic. And then um, Alex does like guitar and bass and like oh, nice. keys and like a bunch of other shit. And then Allie is the newest member and she's like phenomenal at guitar. And she does, I think she does a little bass too, but we, we oh, mainly wow. like do a lot of. We mainly do a lot of guitar together um, on stage. That's, and, that's, that's and so, That is awesome. It's, it's really, really cool. And like, I, I also play bass at some points on stage. So it's going to be really, really cool. It's going to be an awesome performance. And like, got Pilgrim, like bass so solo thingies, like where we're all <laughs> battling together. That would be sick. We, we, we do only have one bass though. I've been trading it off. <laughs> we, we trade off my bass. I mean, we have more than one bass, but it's like, we have my vase for tour because it has yeah, yeah. all the stickers on it. Oh yeah. 
yeah. just gonna be a whole about. anyways i'm really excited for yeah. that should be is it, yeah i'm sure it's gonna be amazing well i know it will be i'm i'm gonna be there I, i'm looking forward to it so that i can't wait to see you me too man me too i'm so excited stop, 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 stop. i'm gonna cry i'm gonna cry <laughs> Ari, what motivates you as a musician? I think there's a lot of ways I could answer that, but the thing that popped into my head first, I think is what I should answer with, is the fact that there are so many people who somehow relate to my music. And I think that's so special that there's nothing else I can do at this point than try to continue to do this as long as I can. Like it's, I, this is going to be a ra very rambly and like probably not making very much sense response, but I just really appreciate the audience that I've been able to create over the past, like maybe seven years of my life. Like that's crazy to think about. <laughs> that's so <laughs> fucked up. Um, I'm just so, so grateful for these people. And I think I relate to so many of them on such a personal level and a lot of them are such similar age groups to me like a lot of them have grown with me and it it makes me want to keep going and make different stuff and continue to be as authentically myself as I can to show other people like hey you can be weird and make different stuff if you want to and like look a little different and act a little different if you want to because that's part of growing up and being a person so I don't know I just want I want to continue to connect with that that group of people for as long as I can because I feel very grateful for this like this platform this space and like this ability to make what I love yeah that's a beautiful answer thank you I find it incredible like just the way that like the thing you were saying earlier like there's so many people that just absolutely love what you're doing like there's such a love for what you're doing that it's like the only thing that you want to actually do and it's like to continue that for just like the excitement that you and your fans like mutually share for like change and new music and just seeing you grow as an artist so that's yeah that's that's amazing it's really awesome and i love like i don't know i i'm the i'm i currently have a weird relationship with social media which i think a lot of artists and people on the internet in general do <laughs> like yeah. i don't know but I do love when I can just like hop on Twitter and be like, hey, I love you. Yeah. Like, I miss you. I'm really excited for tour and Make have people reply and be excited about it with me and not have to worry about anything else besides that's cool. People are excited. And I said hi. And that's all I have to worry about. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just that sort of casual like friendship sort of audience environment where it's not like you don't feel forced to be no. there but no. when you're exactly. there you're supported which is really nice you're there when you want to be there and people are, are there for it and that's it's really it. nice i love just like yeah sending a tweet whenever i want to and i'm in the mood and just seeing people engage straight away like it's just love it's all love it's beautiful it's really really sweet i love it so much i'll get ready for it this question it says who is your favorite artist of all time oh man I, I mean that's so hard to answer um there's so many artists that i just absolutely adore but i think out of all of them as someone that's a producer and a songwriter and all of that kind of stuff there's one person that i really kind of love and that's a guy called nobody really knows who not not well not a lot of people know who he is but not many people and it's he's called todd rundgren and he's like this just absolutely incredible producer from like the 60s 70s he's just done he's produced everything from like motown r&b rock um just everything prog and he just makes mm -hmm. amazing records himself he's just a really great uh singer songwriter and just like hits me in the feels every time i listen to him so uh, i don't know there's something really special about his music that i've just always adored ever since like i was growing up and i guess He's the reason why I, I like to experiment and do new things, try new things out and, and always like change as much as possible. So yeah, probably Todd Rundgren. Sweet. That's, <laughs> that's really cool. That's a good, yeah, a Todd nice, Rundgren. like concise answer. I need to look him up now. Yeah, he's cool. He's really, he's, he's just amazing. He made, he'd like made technology for Apple in the seventies and stuff before they got big. Okay, it's, King. 
he had a, a, a like he made one of the first music videos like he just pioneered everything it was crazy that's nuts that's really cool mm -hmm. i would not have been able to answer that question so i'm really proud of you for answering that question with like a really good answer too that guy sounds <laughs> sick <laughs> oh thank you thank you he is amazing yeah he's so cool Hey, Chloe, what's going on, man? Hi. What are you currently working on, dude? <laughs> that like lift at the end that I think really gets you. Like the, and like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's particularly American, but I'll give you a 10 out of 10 because I love you. <laughs> yes. We gotta jump, we gotta jump. Um, currently I'm working on, a lot i'm rehearsing for tour obviously that's taking up a lot of my time oh, I bet. I imagine. um which i'm grateful for i we just made a set list i'm really excited to like be like fully on top of like rehearsing the set list as a whole now before tour so it's gonna fun. be really really awesome i can't wait um and i also have been making like weird different music like i was in la what seems like forever ago but i it was actually pretty recently and I I did like a bunch of writing sessions back to back with a lot of different people and I made like a bunch of weird like sort of like PC music inspired stuff which was which was really really fun and cool like I I don't know it was I'm I'm trying to get like more industrial and like weird and like poppy and like punky but like I don't know just just weird with my music I want to make different stuff than what I'm used to, and I yeah. have been, which I think is really fun. Oh, awesome! Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really cool. But I, I'm currently more focused on rehearsing. I think mm -hmm. at the moment it's taking up a lot of my brain. They're like two very different kind of spaces, aren't they? You have to kind of step out to rehearse, like the amount of setting up and all of that. It's very different to just sometimes when I'm like setting up for rehearsals and stuff. I'm like, is this even music? Like I'm just like working mm -hmm. with some wires and stuff. And then you step on and you make music and it's awesome. But yeah, that, that must be so cool. And it's so cool to yeah. hear that you're doing like, you're trying out more like industrial beats and all kinds of different like production kind of things. So I'm really excited to really, really where fun. you go next. Thank you. I'll send you stuff if you want. Oh, I don't know if you've heard anything. No, I'd love to. I'd love to hear some more stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. I'll yeah. send you stuff after this then. Please do. first ever live show <laughs> what was it like for you when was your first live show I'm gonna have to go back on my Instagram and look because I have no perception of time like whatsoever but it feels like it's literally been like eight million years I need to look hold on You've been at it a lot longer than I have as well so it's like what was yours like what when was yours I think mine was mine was pretty recent it was like 2018 um, I was in, it was in Bedford where I'm from, good old Bedford, Bedford, Bedford. yeah, yeah, Bedford. Bedford, Bedford, Alabama, man, um, and, um, I had no clue what the fuck I was doing, to be honest, or how to play any of my songs, I just kind of thought I could wing it, because I'd never done it before, so I kind of got up on stage and just thought, yeah, I kind of have to play my songs, forgetting that it's, like, a completely different thing, like, you don't just get on stage and play, like, the studio recording, so I got on stage and I was like trying to play the synth parts on my guitar while forgetting there was a guitar part underneath. I was like, what the hell am I doing? I'm kind of drunk right now as well. So this is even worse. Why did I drink before I went on? It was like I was having a literal panic attack in my head. And then oh, it no. um, And apart from all of that, it was actually kind of fun because like a show is a show at the end of the day. And it shows a show at the end of the day. It happens. So, yeah, that's you know what? I wish I were there. <laughs> you do not. You would have. I do. Would have, I like, would have hung out. I would have been like, yes, yes. I would have been the only person like moshing in the crowd. Yeah, to be if honest. there were, if there was any, if there wasn't anyone moshing for <laughs> any reason, I would be the one moshing. Uh, <laughs> me, it's me, and I'm like I, I, fist pumping. I'd join in with you, to be honest. Exactly. Um, I just found that my first show was actually pretty recently as well. It just feels like forever ago. Yeah. Technically, it was pretty recent. It was December first. 2018 it was oh. on my my parents birthday because they both have a december 1st birthday which is weird no way um, really? yeah well, yeah my my dad has a twin too so it's like my aunt my dad and my mom's birthday are all on december 1st my wow. mom was born in a different year but it's that makes it kind of easy to like for presents and birthdays right 
it's really easy to remember oh. but and I also had my first show on that day so they all came and I made everyone sing happy birthday and it was that really is, sweet that is really sweet it so, was a really really wow. really sweet show like I was just appalled at the fact that there were like so many people there to see me mm. like just sing my little ukulele songs and sing them back to me like it was just me on stage with the ukulele like that was it I it was just like very surreal to be able to have such a connection with you know with an audience and make so many people sing happy birthday to my parents like, or was it somewhere else yeah it was here it was in Detroit oh sick yeah it was it was a really really good time like that's really, and, that's, that's and, so nice that you got like a massive audience to sing it to everyone as well all of your family members who yeah, are it was it was really sweet I'm like I was just looking back at pictures now it makes me like so happy it was that like mm -hmm. I don't know I I think that was like a very transitional point in my life I'm lucky that like I didn't absolutely I was scared that I was gonna like puke or like piss my pants on stage because like I always get really I my body just starts like doing feeling all the feelings at once like right before I get on stage I'm like do I have to go to the bathroom do I have to go to the other bathroom uh, do I have to uh vomit do I am I sweating should I should I change like this so all nice. happens like 30 seconds before I go on horrible, it's, isn't it I get so bad, but I never know what I want to actually do because I'm so anxious. My heart's beating and I, I have definitely puked and peed myself before a gig. So totally normal. Um, I love you. Um, I wish I could have been there to hold your hair back, King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was actually pretty short at the time, luckily. So. God, do I go with the most British thing ever? Do I do I say, well, it's not even made by Brit. Do I say the thing that everyone sings at football games? The initials are S and C. <laughs> that, oh my God. This bitch is like, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Sweet Caroline. That, that upsets me. I really thought you were going to like pull out something like crazy deep like I thought you were a karaoke fan I'm a fan of karaoke I love to get down what is it going love on. to like make my friends get down equally as energetically as I'm getting down all right what's he gonna say what's he gonna say what if what is it come on come on what's the karaoke go-to song I I have a few actually oh okay damn you came prepared like they're not go-to's but like there are songs that popped in my head and I know that I would pick if you were like karaoke right now. Okay, interesting. Maybe I'll take one of these and make it mine as well. <clears throat> okay. Um, definitely would would leave out the end part of this song because I it's really annoying. Um, but my band, D12, definitely happening. Don't know definitely that song. happening. These chicks don't even know the name of my band. You don't know that song? My band? Yeah, my band, my band. Are you Who's kidding? Brian? It's like, it's D12. It has like oh, old Eminem. Never mind. Yeah, I do know. I'm going to kill you. I'm that sorry. frustrated me so much I'm for a second. Sorry. I was like, sorry. How do you sorry. Look it. I even have the head oh. for it. Um, second, Speechless, Lady Gaga. Underrated, beautiful classic. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful classic song. We stand. We stand, Gaga. She's so good. That song is amazing. Everyone should listen to that song. But everyone else does. And then third one would be Somebody to Love Queen. Oh my god. I was almost gonna say Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody would be a good one too. That should that would have been a better choice. Sweet Caroline is so like everyone like okay. I, was say I guess it. the bum 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 would give someone confidence if they were like karaokeing and didn't like it, because everyone's gonna do the bum bum bum. It's just such a lads, lads, lads song. I just thought it'd be funny, but it's the, the it used to be a meme here and it's not funny anymore. And I've just up and I'm well, I didn't there. experience that. I don't live there, so like you don't have to worry about me judging yeah, it like that. Sorry, I understand. Yeah, goodbye. No, no, Alfie, you can you can sing "Sweet Caroline" to me anytime. Thanks. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, we can we can do a we can do a karaoke of that and somebody to love and Fuck detail yeah. my band and all all of that. Yeah. That'll yeah. be amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a crazy night. You're going to have a pink and green little streak in your hair. And we're going to be at Greece 
in the we're going to be in Greece. Oh, it's going to be great. Bar. The question be great. in liquid form. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really good feta cheese pie things that they make that are just the best things ever. So I can't wait. In my dreams, I'll meet you there. Be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll go to the same place tonight. I've just told my head with my cool. like, little, like Elon Musk like brain chip thing that he's making. <laughs> oh, weird guy. <laughs> <laughs>